What's going on guys? My name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel. It's time for another episode of the Inner C2 Electric Boogaloo. Today we're going to take a look in Lost Omens Legends where the stories of the individual regions within the meta regions are being run forward on into the future and look at what's going on in the hold of Belkzen, how things have moved forward, all that fun stuff. If you're liking what you're seeing, do remember to like, subscribe, and ding the bell if you have any requests for individual personages and therefore regions. Let me know down in the comments. As always, Paizo, thank you so much for the PDF. Avenue Studios, thank you so much for the editing. Y'all better go check them out. They objectively have better live play content than me, but let's hit it. Okay, so as far as this region is concerned, follow this card right up here. We can catch you up on like the premise, the basics, things like that. But one of the things I like the most about second edition, really, I find myself saying this over and over again, is that we are slowly transitioning from a world which is a giant kitchen sink of tropes and concepts and things like that and helping it live, letting it breathe or in some cases, assassinating the leader and throwing zombies at them, but yeah, we're, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Okay, so now that you've went and watched that old episode of the Inner Sea Region of Five Minute Tour and you're all super caught up, Graskal Death, yeah, he's a super dead, it turns out, assassinated, and rulership of the lands has transferred to his major domo, Ardex the White Hair, who refers to himself as the steward of the Hold of Belkzen. He has not claimed the title of warlord has not ascended to the throne, matter of fact, left Grask's body, blade stuck in it and all to sit on his throne. So it's kind of like take whoever Gowron's major dormo would have been and like Alfred from Batman and put him together and there you go. That's who's in charge now. As you would expect, Ardex is nothing short of just the most cunning dude in Belkzen probably. Wears his hair cut short, wears hide armor instead of big heavy stuff. By class actually, the book lets you know he's a neutral evil male orc barbarian rogue. So yeah, that's trope subversion 101 and not what you would expect at all. And that's true for the other orc warlords who will show up to talk to him and spend the entire meeting just trying to find a weapon on the dude. This shrewd method of diplomacy has helped keep all of the orc holds in line, which is super important given that they live next door to a reawoken lich who, yes indeed, first things first, sent an emissary to Urgir to try to rekindle those old alliances. I'm just gonna quote straight from the book on this one because it's so dope. Ardax wasted no words on them. He had the honor Envoys cut down as soon as they'd finished their speeches. He then hung their heads on the walls of her gear and sent their mounts back over the border, dragging the messenger's corpses behind them. Tarbophon's proposals stuffed into their necks. Now there's a culture built on power, on strength, on war that, you know, isn't using it to be a bad trope, so that's fun. Anyway, Tarbophon was a little miffed at this, one might say, and this kicked off what is today known as the Battle of Nine Broken Skulls. The Lich sent an army of undead into Urgir, into Belgzen, expecting to see a bunch of fractured and warring orc tribes. Instead, Ardax rallied a coalition, used Urgir as their fortress, and held off the Whispering Tyrant's forces. Yeah, you know what? Here's another quote. When the long battle ended with the total rout of the Whispering Tyrant's forces before the united strength of the holds, Ardax strode into the field and claimed ten skulls from the fallen undead. Nine times, Ardax held a skull in the air before the gathered might of the orcs. He named Named each after an enemy overcome by orc strength and crushed them in his hands. The tenth he named Tarbophon and left Hull adorned with cow horns as a mockery of the tyrant. He kept the tenth skull nearby, bearing it as a reminder of the orc's shared enemy. And yeah, present day, that's what you're looking at. A fragile nation making allies all over the place. And we're talking everyone from Azaersi and Oprak to rune lords reawoken and back again to try to keep the whispering tyrant down while also continuing Graskal Death's great work of uniting the orc holds, moving them forward, keeping them relevant on the world stage and not just vying for dominance within the blasted valley that is the Hold of Belkzen. And the new setup makes it really easy to run the Hold of Belkzen in your game set in the Inner Sea region because you no longer need like special permission or an army of soldiers to move through the place. Perhaps you work for Sorshen or Azairsi or anybody else and you need to 
go help foster this alliance with the orc holds or maybe if you're from even farther afield and you're trying to make all the friends you can get to fight the whispering tyrant because honestly why wouldn't any of us be to say nothing of truly and you'd have to go pop open belk's and hold of the orc hordes from 1e to see this a little better but there are so many different orc tribes with so many different things going on that a gm can roll into their campaign anything from making peace with the dragons that live in the mountains to helping sustain crops along the flood road because truly that solves a lot of their problems right blasted land only fertile sometimes limited resources protect those resources from raiders of all shapes and sizes and learn druidy things as well it's a win-win-win scenario but that's all the time i have for this one what do y'all think are we reenacting famous battles against the Whispering Tyrant in our campaigns? Are we desperately waiting for a second edition campaign where we go to the Gravelands and punch zombies to come out? Of course we are, right? Why wouldn't we? We'll be back at it soon for another episode of the Inner Sea 2 Electric Boogaloo. Until then, my friends, we'll see you next time.